So this is Anthony Stephan. Anthony is a graduate student at Florida Institute of Technology. And through this talk, he'll tell you something about his involvement with Simeon. But uh, this week he has, he is taking the exams of his life where all of us do while we were in graduate school, what that means towards his doctoral di dissertation. And um, we can wish him well, or as my brother who is in theater would say, a break a leg. Uh, so Anthony, you're on. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. And I, I will be concise because I know I'm seven minutes and I apologize for being just a little just bit a little. late. Uh, however, um, thank you everyone for uh, listening to this talk here that we have. Yes, although I am in these exam, this exam week for the qualification exams, uh, I'm so excited always to talk about Scutum. It's such an honor because of the impact that it's had in my life uh, and also the impact that I tried to bring and give to students. And that's why I love being uh, so involved. So this will be just kind of an overview of Scutum, what it's like to participate as a student, a coach, a judge, all the way to uh, some of the experiences and what our results for this past Scutum was like. And then also where we want Scutum to maybe go in the future, some future directions. So the origin story, uh, which we can kind of just glimpse over was, Brian Winkle, who uh, actually started as the founder of Scutum through Simeode, uh, was suggested by another professor that, hey, what we should do is, we're teaching differential equations, what we should do is we should provide to the students some type of experience that takes them outside of the classroom setting and allows these students to learn differential equations in a new dynamic way. And so um, what Brian came up with was, let's give them an option of different disciplines to select to try to model. Uh, so he said, let's do three different problems use in, and we're gonna challenge these students to try to model these problems using differential equations. And we'll give them one week to complete and present their results to some type of judge that can give them feedback on these results. Uh, so they did a prototype uh, the first time in 2017. Um, they what they did is they had actually eight teams in the area participate. These students gave a 10 minute video presentation and the faculty of the host site of where they presented some mathematical faculty actually uh, judged their presentations for them and and uh, ranked them and through the ranking gave them certificates of an outstanding a meritorious and a successful achievement. Uh, for just participating. And then also there was a math trivia bowl that was also uh, at the end of the event, kind of a fun thing. And I believe that there's also a trivia event here. So if you have the uh, time to participate in that, those are always really fun math trivia events. So this first actually origin entire process and story is uh, posted on the Simeode YouTube channel. Uh, so you could go there and see the students' experiences and, and actually watch what how they presented. So the purpose now, this is this Scutum was now born and it said, well, we should really host this every year. And so the purpose of Scutum is so that students with many different backgrounds uh, that are at a university who might have the skill sets of calculus or and uh, linear algebra or even just uh, just like an elementary differential equations, from these cross disciplines can get involved in learning more about uh, mathematical models. And so the nice part about this too is that Scutum offers math problems that are essentially very, uh, out, not only outside the classroom, but very relevant. Sometimes math textbooks that you're learning from, you'll come across a, uh, a modeling problem that has been solved in the 80s or has been solved in the 90s or maybe the early 2000s. But these problems that these students get are very current. And we'll look at a couple examples of how current they actually are. Um, and they're modeling real world problems. So this also gives, uh, the whole purpose of Scutum is to give a good coach experience where the coach, perhaps it's a faculty member at a university and this coach is not actually teaching differential equations, that's a semester. Well, this is nice because if a motivated faculty wants to be engaged with students still in differential equations, they can also participate in this event uh, yearly. And 
also what we want to do is we want to give the students a challenge problem to be able to have the coach a challenge period where the students can give their response uh, and work on the problem. But also we want the coaches to be able before that challenge period to get involved with the students and coach them on what good models would be like. And so this is building a really good relationship with uh, good repertoire with students and uh, different types of faculty member at a university. Um, the other great experience too uh, with this preparation is um, after the students when they start to participate in the challenge period, we want to make sure that the coaches are completely hands off so we can see the students blossom. So that's the purpose of Scutum is that after you have some coaching or uh, coaching for this event, then we want to actually let these students let let them solve these problems. And then that way, there's no uh, coach, um, uh, no coach involvement during the challenge period. And then we want to be able to give the students feedback on what their model was like and from a variety of different backgrounds of different types of judges. So from that first Scutum, uh, Scutum 1, there's been quite a change because now this past year in 2022, we uh, have Scutum 7. So the way that it first originated was the students would provide a presentation and they would also submit an essay. So a 10 minute, 10 minute presentation, and there would be some type of write up or report that the students would provide with their presentation. And this is what the judges would um, uh, give feedback on. Well, now we've transitioned to, because of uh, the pandemic, this was a transition uh, so that the students were didn't need to be uh, locally in the same spot. But I believe it's actually a great transition is what we did is now the students upload their um, results of their model to YouTube in a 10 minute video presentation that the, the judges can then uh, view and provide their feedback. This is great because now the video, not only is it recorded, but also there's a wide range uh, of outreach that the these models, these mathematical models can be viewed. It's not just a local one-time thing. It can now be viewed uh, in many different areas uh, completely globally. Uh, another thing is, is that we've extended the time. It used to be one week, and now it's extended to three weeks. This gives students, because it's normally mid-semester, uh, gives stu students the opportunity to actually work on it and provide a, a great model. Um, and then also the local judges, because it used to be in one host site location, these local judges uh, now have become global judges and even more than just the faculty that are willing to participate. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of wonderful judges that volunteer for each scutum, but they're all over the world. And uh, because of the online video submission, these judges are able to view students that are not from the even the same country as them. Uh, so this is wonderful because we get so much more dynamic and diverse feedback from judges and dynamic and um, uh, very different uh, submissions from students. And then uh, as these regional sites have used to host this, another great aspect is that with it being online, it creates this global network where we can actually have students participating that don't necessarily need to be in the same location anymore. Uh, the students don't need to present at a regional site. Now they can present all in a recorded video and upload this uh, as their submission. So you can have students in China working with Russia and then also all the way over working in Brazil. So it's, it's a fantastic experience. And here I just list a few, uh, a lot, uh, generally of the countries that have participated. And uh, this was the participation of the countries two years ago, not specifically last year. So we have, let's look at this. So we actually have a little bit of the summary of the results of Scutum 7. The top should be Scutum 7 here in 2022. So this was the last year's results. We have uh, that there were a total of 109 teams that participated. And these were the uh, awards that were given. We see that 27 received outstanding, 57 meritorious, and 26 successful. Um, and so the main part here is that 
we are seeing a growth in a, a, in a direction that we want to see where we've had uh, an extra almost 30 teams participate. Uh, so this is a great growth and we'd like to see this continue to grow. And the one thing that we started doing now that we have the recording of these student presentations, we actually um, have started to post the outstanding students, which is the highest distinction honor. We've post these students presentation that they submitted, the 10 minute videos on the Simeode website. So we're actually able to show off what these students are doing and um, the resources for the problems that were sent out and given to all the students are located on the Simeode website in the Cubes uh, Hub website. And so three different teams uh, were awarded outstanding, uh, or three different teams that were awarded outstanding distinction are actually giving their talk in three different problems after this talk, following my talk here. So if you're interested in seeing a couple of the student teams and what, how they presented, uh, that will be available immediately after this talk. So why am I giving this talk, right? Why am I the guy? Why was I chosen? And so I participated in 2018 and I participated with my best friends. And so that's why I love this, uh, this challenge because these students that I participated with were not in my differential equation class. So I had an opportunity to work with uh, a couple of my buddies from my undergrad. Um, and then, so yes, I was uh, awarded an outstanding distinction for a predator prey model. And after that, uh, after modeling this predator prey model, I actually was invited by Brian to give a talk in 2019 at JMM of our model with my friends. So we got to travel all the way to Baltimore, Maryland and give a presentation on our model. And then later uh, we published in a, the Rose Holman undergraduate math journal, our, our results. And so we had an undergraduate publication. And in 2018, then, um, after I participated, so uh, in the next SCUDAM, I uh, judged a few presentations. And then also in 2019 through all the way to 2022, so even now, I I've been a coach. And, I and that, that amount of teams I've, I've coached has increased. Uh, so a flavor of some of the results. So just here on the on the left hand side, I give you some of my students' results. This was a, uh, at the ones that are cited below. The uh, Miles, Chen Ming, and Henry. They gave a presentation on how uh, a bird actually uses a wheel. Uh, it sits on top of a wheel, and as the the bird as the wheel rotates and the bird is clenched onto the top of the wheel. How exactly does the bird gain momentum by moving or shifting its weight? And it kind of, the bird act, it naturally acted like a, a human would on a swing of shifting weight. Uh, this was some of just the results on the predator prey model that I did. And then also another, so uh, another result was uh, how it was a moderation problem. So how can companies successfully moderate their users to try to do moderation of the different opinions? Uh, but generally, and this was this one was also great. They did a graph theory problem. Uh, but before even be, besides going into the math, you can see here how relevant these problems are. This one was from a video that was posted online that year and went viral. Uh, all the way on the far right, we have moderation of very popular, uh, extremely popular companies such as Twitter, Facebook, uh, Google, etc. And everything is linked in and synced and very modern. Um, so some aspects of how individuals can grow by participating in SCUDAM. As a student, uh, my own experience was that I learned how to actually create a math model for modern problems that I absolutely knew nothing about. I had no idea that the problem existed and it, I was given this problem and I was like, wow, uh, how can I even go about doing this? And also I learned how uh, every single problem that Scutum offers, they give you a reference to the resource of where this problem is generated and how it's generated. And so what a great aspect of this was is that I learned how to take research papers, a research paper or video, and turn that into, okay, what information can I gather from there and how can I imp implement it accurately in my model? Uh, so this was, this helps you read research papers appropriately, and I have appropriately highlighted because we all know as time progresses, we read research papers kind of differently from skim reading when we have higher level skills. So it was a great introduction to that as an undergrad. 
And then also recognize and capitalize on a team strengthening project. Uh, so what are uh, my skill sets? What are, what are the other skill sets of my team members? And how can I contribute? And you need to be able to capitalize on this and do this very appropriately so that you're able to perform really well when presenting your model or creating it in general. And also learn how to present. So the biggest part of this is we're presenting our model, right? How do you present mathematically and concisely? So it goes from something so different of doing a normal history project or in other classes. Uh, we find often that in math departments uh, with math courses, it's fairly uncommon for students to give presentations on math. Normally all the time, uh, uh, it's very different all around the world, but um, one interesting aspect is they're normally just taking exams, quizzes, and doing homework. And, the, and the, the professor is just lecturing. So this gives them an opportunity to start talking verbally, taking ideas in their head and things they can write down and push that out of, as an output of their mouth. And, and this, is, this is so uh, great because we know that this is the best way that math progresses. For coaching, um, definitely learned how to manage and engage with students, learned where students' skill sets are and how they can improve. Uh, learned definitely how to build relationships with motivated students. The students prior that I talked uh, to everyone about, about doing the under, they did the undergraduate with the bicycle and the moderation model. These students, I engaged with them in the, in, in Scutum. And then afterward, continued to work with them to, uh, to give, let them give the talk and the presentation at, at a, at a different conference, actually at the Simeote Expo last year. And then also help them develop that undergraduate um, publication that they received. And then definitely, I think my favorite part about coaching is that after you see your students' results, you get the opportunity to see how other people mo do mathematical models. So normally all that we see later on in life and research is whatever is right and whatever is published. You don't get to see kind of like the brain work or the notes and this you get to see that with students. So it's very rich in that regard. Um, and then as a judge, of course, you get to see numerous results for just one math problem. How do these students uh, give their results? And also how to uh, improve mathematical models because what you do is you get their model and you say, Okay, so as a judge, how can you improve this? So it's a great learning experience. And also know how to give, if you're working as a judge, you have to give so much feedback. How do you do this concise and at a student level so that they can understand what your feedback is? So not only positive feedback, but also constructive. And all of these right here from every different perspective are amazing service and academic CV resume items to be able to put on a coach's resume, a judge's uh, resume, or even a student's for sure. Building student CVs is, is very important. And so here for the uh, the future directions of Scutum, we we definitely are are so proud of what we how it's grown and what it's become. It allows for these modern problems outside of the classrooms to be introduced and students to think dynamical in this way using differential equations. But there's this interesting analogy that we see. And I think that this is kind of one of uh, definitely my visions of what I see Scutum going towards and something that Scutum maybe in the future could provide is that the analogy of coaching and doing a student experience is very similar to doing more of a research oriented uh, experience with a research advisor and maybe a grad student. But this is offered differently at an undergraduate level. And there's not a lot of repercussions for uh, students, you know, getting the engagement and getting the feedback. And if they have a successful, then let's get to meritorious. If they have meritorious, let's get to outstanding. And so if you're able to engage with these students by their second year or something, you're able to see their progress and almost act like a somewhat of a research oriented advisor. And we see here that there's some analogies. So the analogies is coaching students is like being a research advisor. Scutum itself is like working on a modern research problem. Presenting a model is similar to presenting at conferences. And the YouTube submission and getting the judge's feedback is like submitting to a journal and getting a referee's feedback. And then also the, uh, the post-Scutum after action report as uh, 
they would say in the military is getting involved with students after they get their feedback from the judges. Normally, sometimes coaches will just stop and they'll take a halt and they'll say, um, uh, they'll say, great job, here's your award and that's it. Let's actually go further than that as a coach, right? Let's get the students to come back, look at the feedback, look at the judge's model uh, or their, their feedback and then improve your model. Let's talk about it. What did this judge say? What did that judge say? And make sure that the students are interpreting what the judges give as feedback accurately to, how, um, to what the main intent of that judge was. And um, writing for perhaps maybe an undergraduate journal that's one-to-one -one as, as for uh, uh, writing or creating some type of presentation and then also turning that into some type of paper. So this is uh, the questions are, how does Scutum assist with these future directions or, or in, in, in any way, how can Scutum improve? And uh, this could be done by implementing different types of workshops, resources, or getting in contact and developing undergraduate or getting in contact with undergraduate journals for an opportunity that's for students that participate in Scutum can perhaps if they develop a well model and have outstanding results and do a presentation and take it further to a write up that you're kind of sponsoring them in an undergraduate journal for, how can they get involved with that? And, and so these are kind of like ways that we could bridge these future directions with um, uh, modern times. So I thank you so much for my talk. I, pro I apologize that it was uh, not only fast and I went uh, quick, but also that I was late, uh, but I appreciate everyone's attention and please I'll stick around uh, for some time at the next break. And I'd love to have a discussion with anyone about this stuff. Well, thank you very much, Anthony. Uh, broad, broad view. Uh, I do wanna point out that this is also for high school students as well. And we have some high school teams and finally, there are three teams that are gonna be talking in the main room and room one and room two. And Lee, tech, our technical director has made it so that we can go to those rooms and all those things are working. So after this, you can move about. Uh, and uh, we have two other uh, teams talking throughout the conference, uh, not just immediately after this. So check, check those out as well. Um, uh, we really don't have any time for a uh, talk now, but you can uh, contact uh, Anthony during the sessions, uh, reach out to him. Thank you again, Anthony. Thank you for your attention. I will put my email in the chat. So if you don't have time now, I'll put my email there. Please feel free to reach out to me. Yes. Okay. Take care. Bye now. <laughs>